Shalom Israel, Shalom, Shalom Yasharallah. A lot going on, a lot going on as we are in the latter end of this kingdom. Call Lord Yahweh Bashim Yasha. All right. A lot going on. It's really difficult to keep up with the prophecies. And first and foremost, also I want to say Salakia. Um, I haven't um, for to my followers or those who watch uh, my lessons. Um, I haven't been as um, up in keeping the manger full, only due to the fact that I am moving. So it's been really, really hectic um, for the past couple of weeks right now. Um, between that and starting this new job, so Salaki again, once again, please forgive me. Um, it's been difficult for me to find time to, you know, come in and do the lessons and, you know, still kind of keep everything. But uh, Lord's will, within the next couple of days, everything will be ironed out. You know, I'll be in my new place. Everything will kind of just be done. And I'll, we'll be back on schedule. So, uh, please, Salakia, Baba Kusha, um, for um, um, not um, keeping the manger as full, so to speak. All right. So, um, anyway, um, without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. Okay. And the name of this lesson is, Thou has appointed a bounds that he cannot pass. Okay. And as always, I like to start off. With Kahala Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai Bahashim Rahaha Kodash Kahala All praises to Yahweh the Heavenly Father Bahashim in the name of Yahweh Shai who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ Bahashim in the name of Rahaha Kodash which is the Holy Spirit which gives us all knowledge wisdom truth and understanding and double honors and salutations out to the elders and apostles a great millstone for teaching us this truth and rule well and giving us this light. Um, at the end of this kingdom here that we are able to see, as scripture says, entering into another man's labor. So the water for having such wonderful heads to guide us and to give us that light uh, that we may endure. And also salutations out to the innumerable one third that are out here studying diligently to make their election assured across the four corners of the earth. We say shalom unto you as well. Let's keep pushing. All right. Now, let's go ahead and let's just jump right into it here. Hopefully, um, this lesson isn't too long here. I um, just kind of want to touch on some things. Again, the name of the title lesson is Thou Has Appointed His Bounds That He Cannot Pass. So we're going to start with that topic of that scripture. All right. Now, um, now, as we know, all throughout history, kingdoms and empires have been raised up in glory and brought down in ruin, right? And we, Israel, has been subject or enslaved under every nation created under the sun, okay? Whether they were minor captivities, like the, um, uh, the Midianites, who were the Arabs, for like, I want to say, seven years, or major captivities like Pharaoh of Egypt for over 400 years, all right? Each nation has had its time. Okay, and when you go into the book of Daniel, the seventh chapter, and I know myself, I did a couple of breakdowns on that, and plenty of the Akim that are out here in this truth have done breakdowns on Daniel, the seventh chapter, and it's, it's, important, it's an important chapter to understand because it talks about the four major kingdoms that ruled in secular history from past pres and to present. Um, and understanding how they ruled, how they were brought up, and how they were brought down. Okay, um, so that's why it's very, very important. And though it's written heavily in parabolic form, um, as I said, um, it talks about four major empires, but it's describing them as beasts. Okay, and these are all actual empires that rule in secular history. All right, again, like I said, from past um, to present, um, I would say future, but this is the last kingdom that we are in before Yahweh shall return. So, call hello Yahweh Yahweh shall for that. Okay, um, so um, again, um, this is just um, expounding on how the Heavenly Father raises one up after another in power. Okay, and each kingdom was defeated by its following successor, okay, in that proper order in Daniel 7, okay? And um, the first precept I'm going to pull is uh, Psalm 75 and 7, but Yahweh is the judge. He putteth down one and setteth up another, right? So the Lord sets up all the kingdoms of the world, okay, to rule in biblical and secular history, destroying the claims of the Bible being some fairy tale book or ideologies of stories, okay? It's because they simply don't understand the parables nor know how to read the book itself okay so again going into daniel 7 those heavy parabolic uh uh, uh, uh writings um where he's using actual animals to describe kingdoms okay now the first one is the lion with eagle's wings okay and that would be the babylonian empire okay the second is the bear with three ribs in his mouth and that would be the medo-persian empire 
okay? And the third is the leopard with four wings of a fowl, and that'd be the Greek Empire, okay? Now keep in mind, the Greek Empire is Esau's first kingdom, all right? And the only kingdom that was removed out of the KJV translation of the Bible today, okay? Unless you have the 1611, okay, Bible, um, it's in there, but if you don't have that, those were removed. And the main reason why they were removed because it names actual names in secular history. Again, destroying the um, notion that it's a fairy tale book. You know, Alexander the Great, Antiochus Epiphanes, uh, 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 um, um, just to name a couple. Uh, um, Salakia, I'm trying to think of the other man. Um, Philip of Macedonia. All of these men were actual real men that ruled in real secular history in kingdoms. Okay, so they had to remove that. So that plays along with this whole fairy tale because, again, the Bible's written in parabolic form. So if you don't understand it, it will sound somewhat like sci-fi or fairy tale in certain chapters. Okay, but that's only because it was not given unto you to understand it, but it was only given unto a select men. And that was recorded in Matthew, the 13th chapter. All right. Now, the fourth beast um, with iron teeth is the Roman Empire. Okay. Um, and that was from, uh, I want to say, 146 B.C. And Rome went down 476 B.C. Okay. And then returning uh, during the Renaissance era, around the 400, uh, uh, I want to say early 400s. Okay. So that was that thousand year seal uh, spoken about in Revelations, the 20th chapter. Okay. And that deadly wound that healed. Okay. Because that deadly wound that healed is that little horn. Okay, that came out of that fourth beast. Okay, and again, when you read Daniel the seventh chapter, it expounds upon it. That little horn is the United States of America. Okay, Daniel seven seventeen. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall rise out of the earth. You see, now the fourth and last beast was described as the little horn, as I said, and we know that to be America, Esau's last kingdom to stand before Yahweh shall returns and establish his everlasting kingdom. We know this because you say it every Sunday in the Lord's prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. That's our kingdom. Okay. That's Jacob's kingdom. And we also know that when you go to second Ezra six, nine, Esau is the end of the world, which we're living right now. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth, right? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Jacob, our world. Follow me. All right. Moving on, Daniel 7, and we're going to go 7 through 8, just to touch on this. After this, I saw in the night vision, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth, and it devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns, and I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And before and behold, in this horn were eyes like eyes of a man and mouth speaking great things. Again, parables, heavy parables. OK, you would not know what that's talking about um, if you don't have the understanding of the book. OK, so this beast is Rome, the Roman Empire. I'm um, Salakia. This beast uh, 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 is Rome. All right. And that iron teeth is talking about um, the military, that military might and the ten horns is a representative of power, okay? And that little horn is America, okay? That came out of that first horn. Remember, Rome went down, okay? And then it revived back up during the Renaissance era, um, early 1400s, okay? That was that deadly wound that went down, but it revived back up and came back as America, okay? So this is what we have to understand. <clears throat> Salakia. And the ten horns, again, are NATO in the EU. Now, the prophet Ezra actually saw this same vision, but the parable that was used was a lion and an eagle, the lion representing um, Israel. Um, and the eagle was representing the ancient seal of the Roman Empire and modern day today, the seal of the United States of America. All right. We know this. All you have to do is look on the back of your dollar bill. All right. Second address, 1139. Are not thou it? that remainest of the force beef who I made to reign in my world, that the end of their time might come through them. You see? Salakia, give me one second here. Um, uh, lost my train of thought here. Um, right. Okay, so... Um, again, Salakia. So, this was um, Ezra, and he actually saw the same vision... Okay, again, so uh, 2nd Ezra 11.39. 
Art not thou that that remainest of the fourth beast out of all four kingdoms? That was the last beast who I made to reign in my world, that the end of their time might come through them. Right, you see? So now we circle back to Daniel 7. All right, the three horns plucked up by the roots. Okay, that's talking about Spain. Okay, during the Spanish-American War of 1898. Okay, and the French. Okay, during the French and Indian War of 1754. Okay, and the last is the British Revolutionary War of 1775. Okay, again, secular history. This is not a fairy tale book. Okay, speaking great things, boasting most proud of his accomplishments, his, his, his feats, all right, his, his space exploration, his scientific discoveries, moon, moon travel, um, his democracy, you know, his mighty military might, all right, and through his technology, all right, and his unicorns, he's able to have that all seeing eye like, like the Heavenly Father. This is Esau, okay? Now, after all the kingdoms have ruled, all right, and the kings or governments of the earth are defeated. America, or that little horn being that last king, proves that Esau will be in power when the Lord returns. Okay, destroying the claim that China got next, man. All right, Moab, Moab is not mentioned nowhere in the rulership of the four major empires in Daniel 7. Okay, only thing more I've got to look for is some chains, man. That's it. All right, the Lord has spoken. Daniel 7, 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was like a fiery flame, and the wheels as burning fire. Right, that's chariots. All right? What the world eagerly calls UFOs. This is Yahweh and his chariots of fire, all right? Returning as a quickening spirit, pursuant to Isaiah 47, 3. Okay, ending the war of all wars. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. That's talking about all the, 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 the kings and kingdoms and rulerships of the earth. Okay, were all cast down and destroyed. Okay, so as you see, it says after the, after the, after the little horn, he beheld until the thrones were cast down. All the kingdoms were finished. After the little horn, after America, Yahweh Shah sits on the throne. All right, Moab is not there. Okay, you have to understand that, regardless of what these people are saying out here in the news. Okay, the scriptures are all that matters. All right, now when you go into the scriptures, you'll see Esau ruled seven different kingdoms in the earth. Okay, Germain, uh, Germania Major, Germania uh, Minor, French, Spain, Greek, British, and lastly, Rome. All right, his first kingdom being Greek, all right, with Alexander the Greek. Okay, and this is again why I said they removed. Um, the Greek Empire out of the Bible because it names names, okay? And so, you know, they couldn't have that, you know? So now, we fast forward today, all right, here we are in this little horn, living, all right, in this time where there isn't much time left, to be honest with you, all right? We're at the end of this little season, okay, pursuant to Revelations 20, okay? All throughout history, these kingdoms have ruled in wickedness, man, okay? Understand something, Israel, not knowing the statues and ordinances of the Lord, or having the faith therein, you will forever walk in darkness. It does not matter how good you think a person may seem to be, okay? Even when Yahweh Shah's servant called him good, or a good master, Yahweh Shah said to his servant, why thou, why thou callest me good? There is none good but the Father, roughly paraphrasing, okay? So from King Nebuchadnezzar, all right, of Babylon, to, to, to Romulus, uh, of Rome, all right? They were all wicked men, okay? And when you go to Ecclesiastes 9.11, what is that? Time and chance happen to all men. And after all their wicked deeds, right, and unrighteous decrees pass, and all their philosophies, all their idolatry, their time is now expired. And this is why all this stuff is befalling us here in America, a.k.a. virgin daughter of Babylon. Okay, we have reached the end here. Sirach 10, 8. Because of unrighteous dealings and injuries and riches gotten by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. Right. So isn't that not what happened here? You see? And that translation was happening all throughout Daniel, the seventh chapter, man. Kingdom after kingdom in that order in real time. All right. But the movie is not over yet. Okay. We're in that last kingdom. All right. Where we have a few more unrighteous prophecies that need to come to fruition. One being Jacob's trouble. All right. In the FEMA camps. All right. Rounding up insubordinate citizens. Okay. To the MOTB, which according to Revelations 13, 16, he's already causing the nations or the world, all right, to march in that direction of the mark. Okay, you see? And three is World War Three, 
which to be honest has already started years ago, but beginning with trade wars. Okay, so you have to understand picking up picking up arms is the last stage. All right, in warfare. All right, before all negotiations and communication is cut off and bloodshed begins. Okay, so this is Esau's last hurrah. That old serpent from the garden. Okay, has now today become a ten-headed dragon, man. Okay, and he ain't going out without a war. Okay, he's going to exercise that blessing to the hilt, man. All right. Revelation 12, 12. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell, dwell in them. And woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil, meaning Esau, is come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth he hath but a short time. Right. And that short time is also mentioned in Revelation, the 20th chapter. That little season. Okay. His short time is up. All right. It is up. So we have to understand, all right? Because Revelations 18, 5, her sins have reached unto heaven, okay? And Yahweh has remembered her iniquities. So just like all the other kingdoms, all right, Babylon's iniquities have now reached the heavens, all right? Which means her time is up, okay? Which brings me to Job 14, 5. Seeing his days are determined and the numbers of his month are with thee, are with who? And who determined his days? Yahweh Shah. Thou has appointed his bounds that he cannot pass the feature scripture. Right. So for those who don't know, talk about the Bible's written by the white man, this and that. Look, let me explain something to you real quick. This is scripture right here lets you know. Yahweh Shah has set a time, okay? A year, a month, a week, a day, an hour, a minute, down to the second that he cannot pass. He cannot go over one second of his time, okay? So this is what we have to understand, okay? And the word bounds, when you go into, because like I said, it's very, and very important to go into the etymology of words, Israel. Okay, don't be simple. You actually have to study this thing, okay? When you go into the word bounds, okay, that's a Hebrew word, 2706, which is koik, pre-written task, limit or boundary, salakia, hoki. Um, Pre-written task, limit or boundary, okay? So we have reached the end of his bounds, okay? This is that great wrath that he's coming down with um, in Revelations 12, 12. And this is why all these things are collapsing here in the earth, all right? Esau's entire world is being has been sown in lies and deception, okay? Pseudoscience, all right? His enchantments of his news medias, all right? Which the word media we know comes from the word medium and sorcery, okay? And now here we are. In the latter end times, all right, which, which we all know a lie cannot live forever, right? And this is why we see um, his stronghold is fading, okay? The Lord is removing that veil that has covered the nations from all of this deception all throughout the years, okay? Which brings me to Isaiah 25, 7. He will destroy in this mountain, meaning this government, the face of the covering cast over all the people and the veil that spread over all the nations, right? So the earth has been long suffering, all right? Under the reign and rulership of Esau, Edom, the wicked top 1% Edomites, okay? They have brought nothing but death, destruction, and war, okay? And now here in the latter end, the Lord is removing, or should I say destroying that, that covering cast, that veil, all right, um, of lies that has blinded all the nations, all the people, you know, and looking at America as so great and, and, and the white man as, as, as the sought after man to be, you know, you want his, his suits, his house, his money, his cars, you know? All that shit's being pulled back now. And people are starting to see him for who he really is. All right? Now, how's he doing this? Through the power of his word from the prophets. All right? The Lord's words are action words, Israel. Okay? So when they're spoken, they cause things to happen or things to occur in the earth. Okay? They're action words. The scripture says his words don't go out void, man. But they accomplish things. They're not like my words or, or, or our normal words. Okay? Isaiah 55 and 11, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. You see, action words, when they're spoken, things happen. Okay, and again, going into that word accomplish, that's a Hebrew word, H6213, also, meaning perform or execute. Okay, and prosper, another Hebrew word, 6743, Selah, come mightily, or to rush, you see? So the Lord's, the Lord's words cause things to go forth, man, 
all right, from the days of antiquity all the way up to today, man, the Lord has brought down many kingdoms, okay? We already spoke of the four major ones wherein the words of the Lord were brought to the, and, and listening to them and rejected them, what happened? They were rewarded of their folly. Each kingdom was brought down, one after another after another. And here we are in that last leg, okay? Jeremiah 28 and 8. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war, of evil, and of pestilence, right? To bring them down. You see, just as today here in America, the Lord is, cons is a consuming fire, okay? Pursuant to, um, I want to say Hebrews, the 12th chapter. All right, all throughout history, the men of the ancient were set up to prophesy against many strongholds to bring them to naught, okay? From Moses with the plagues of Egypt, all right? Noah with the flood, Lot with fire and brimstone of Sodom and Gomorrah, Daniel with the Babylon and the Persian uh, uh, empires, all right? Paul with the Greeks, etc. okay? They all came to bring good news, okay? Good news for Jake, bad news for the rest of the nations, all right? Let's continue. The prophets which have prophesied of peace, when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord has truly sent him. Right, exactly. Like a lot of these pastors, all right, prophesying peace out here. Let me ask you something, y'all. Is there peace out here right now today? If you look outside or turn on the news, media, any news station, does it seem like there's <laughs> peace going on out here right now, man? We can see uh, uh, the answer is no, right? It's clearly understood that the Lord is not dealing with these um, hirelings today, okay? These false prophets, these false, false pastors, right? All right, so we have to understand the true path prophets are back out here, all right? And we've been ordained to prophesy, just like the last three kingdoms before America that we read about in Daniel 7 that were all prophesied to go down, in which they did, okay? This kingdom, the fourth and last, is now in the balance and found wanting, okay? Meaning wicked and undisciplined. So judgment is at hand, okay? Which brings me to another precept of Isaiah 13, one through three. The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amos did see, lift up ye a banner upon the high mountain, exalt the voice unto them, shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. I have commanded my sanctified ones, I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger even them that rejoice in my highness. Right. So again, to break this down, the banner are the scriptures, okay? It says the burden of Babylon, which the son of Amos, uh, 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 Isaiah, the son of Amos did see. Lift up that banner. That banner is the scriptures. The high mountain is American, the American government, okay? And exalt, Salaki, exalt the voice, meaning cry aloud, bring it out, okay? And shake the hand as if you cussing somebody out. Going into the gates of the nobles, all right, are the elites or the rulers or the kings of Babylon here, all right? And calling his sanctified ones are the prophets, all right? Commanding to come teach and come usher in the beginning stages of this decline of America, which is happening right now, okay? We've been commanded to. And his mighty ones, last and least, he is talking about those transcontinental ICBM missiles pursuant to Joel, the second chapter, and many other scriptures, okay? Jeremiah 51 and so forth, okay? America's also known in the scriptures spiritually as Babylon and Egypt, okay? The words of the Lord is a is uh, consuming the prosperity and stronghold of Babylon here, man. For those who can't see it, I mean, ignorance is bliss, I guess. All right, bringing it to naught, man. And, well, how do we know this? Revelations 11, 8. And their dead bodies shall lay in the streets of that great city, which is spiritually, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Right, so again, the breakdown of this is the dead bodies is symbolic to us being in a dead state of mind here in America, not knowing the truth, nor knowing who we are as a people, okay? And Sodom, because of all of the carefree sexual perversions and abominations here, all right? The Lord said the destruction of ancient Sodom and Gomorrah would be left as an example for those who chose to live ungodly, pursuant to 2 Peter 2 and 6, right? And Egypt... America is called because of all of America's religions, its deities, its pagan holidays, all going back to ancient Egypt practices, all right, including the Statue of Italy, uh, Salakia, Statue of Liberty, which um, was sculpted by, oh, what was that guy's name, Frederick, Frederick Bartholdi or something like that, I was reading about him, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, all right, um, basically he was the, the sculptor, all right, who's basically inspired by all of these, um, 
there were these huge like colossal figures that used to guard these Nubian tombs um, in Egypt. Okay, so that's how you know um, he was inspired to uh, uh, to uh, design the Statue of Liberty. All right, which also goes back to um, Salakia. Uh, 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 we know that goes back to Egypt, but also <laughs> obelisks. Okay, when we look at an obelisk in Washington, D.C., that goes back to the Egyptian phallic worship. Okay, so why does Washington, D.C. have a giant Egyptian phallic symbol sitting on its real estate? What's the factuation with this? What's this infatuation with all this? You must, you have to ask yourself, okay? Why is there an Egyptian pyramid on the U.S. American dollar? Okay, these questions at one point or another should cross your mind, Jake. Okay, especially if you're a true man of the Lord. And we know, all right? The Lord wasn't crucified in Sodom or Egypt, all right? Our Lord was spiritually crucified here when they crossed him out, all right, and beat the image of Caesar Borgia into us, you see? And that great city isn't so great anymore, all right? And even the people here in America know that, hence the reason why they make these make America great again. They're admitting <laughs> it's on his decline. <laughs> this is beautiful. Second Edges 1511, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before and will destroy all the land thereof as before. Hmm. So we know the Lord didn't go back and smite Egypt twice. All right. After he brought us out. Right. This is talking about America. OK, that's talking about spiritual Egypt and Sodom. OK. Egypt just means house of bondage, all right, what we will, what we will be brought to, all right, um, by ships to serve out our last captivity. Matter of fact, let me just get it. Exodus 20 and... I want to say um, 2. Ah. I am the Lord thy power, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You see? So we know... Egypt just means house of bondage. Okay. Deuteronomy 28 says, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. <clears throat> Salaki, you see how that all lines up? All right. So, you know, you don't need ships. All right. To go to Israel from Egypt. All right. It's roughly, I want to say about 300 and maybe 80 something miles, maybe 125, 30 hours. All right. In a week's walk. Okay. So by ships, meaning slave ships into Americas, okay, back into bondage again, the house of bondage, you see, it's beautiful when you have that understanding, all right, so all throughout history, all right, um, well, basically when Yahweh Shah came on the scene, which was the beginning of the end, all right, the countdown actually started way back then when he came on the scene, so um, not only does the Bible record all four major kingdoms that rose up in power, all right, in secular history, all right, in Daniel 7, but it also um, records the three world wars that would take place here on earth. Okay, as a matter of fact, let me go ahead and push, um, pull them. I think on here, Revelation 9. I want to see. So this is what you have to understand. This Bible is a living book, okay? This was our book that was stolen out of our temple in the land of Israel during 70 AD when we were escaping Roman persecution, man. Okay? We ain't no damn black. We ain't no damn African-American. We damn sure ain't no African, man. We have our own language. We have our own nation. We have our one and only true power. All right. Revelations 9, 12. One woe. Woe means destruction in the Bible. One woe is past and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. Right. So that first woe, okay, was from 1914 to 1918. That was World War I. Revelations 11:14. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe come quickly. Right. So the second woe was from 1939 to 1945. That was the Second World War. Okay. And the third world war that cometh quickly, or the third woe, will be sometime in the early 2020s. Okay. So here we are today. All right. That great city of confusion is being broken down, as scripture says. All right. We have traffic jams of cargo ships off the West Coast housing all of America's supply chain. Right. We have empty shelves and food shortages. All right. And all our supermarkets across America's skyrocketing prices for food and supplies. OK. Due to hyperinflation of the USD. All right. Gas and oil shortages all across the great 
or should I say, used to be great, <laughs> you know, um, it's just, it's, it's, it's crazy what's going on right now, man. So you see, this is Esau coming down with that wrath, okay, that, that was mentioned, okay, in Revelation 12, 12, okay? And this is the article actually that I had found, I was reading, um, and it's mentioning um, the meaning of American, the American decline. Um, let me go ahead and get it. The American decline is the idea that the United States of America is diminishing in power, geo, geopolitically, militarily, financially, economically, socially, culturally, in matters of health care and or on environmental issues. There has been debate over the extent of the decline and whether it is relative or absolute. Um, it is absolute. OK, those who believe America is in decline are declinists. <laughs> There go Esau. He's always got to. He's always got to label some shit, don't he? Though, <laughs> and so, all right, to be honest with you, um, those a lot of those declinists are the men of the Lord. All right, we know this place is definitely in decline. So again, like I said, that's just like Esau labeling everything, right? So, um, we can see without a doubt that this place is circling the drain. The men of the Lord and the rest of us declinists out here, we can see America circling the drain here, man. All right, and here's another article that actually I was I'm um, reading. I was touching on um, talking about the effects of this devil's wrath and right, what it's causing all right, in the oil and energy industry. Okay. Um, gas shortage prompts power plants to switch oil boosting demands. Okay, so the IEA, which is basically the International Energy Agency, expects energy crunch to lift oil demands above pre-pandemic levels next year. This extended the climb in the oil prices is leaving some other industrial commodities behind and divergencies, Salakia, and divergence that reflects bets that the energy supply shortage will offset any slowdown in the global economy. Right, so when you look at things like, like lumber, precious metals, livestock, you know, uh, 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 remaining below their early 2021 20, peaks, all right. Even when you look at like weather induced supply uh, um, um, constraints uh, and how they're leaving marks on all of our agriculture and all our commodities, all these things are playing into the downfall and the decline of America. Esau Edom's kingdom, man. OK, um, U.S. crude oil rose one point five percent. Article goes on to say to eighty dollars point fifty two, eighty dollars and fifty two cents a barrel on Monday. And this was two weeks ago, closing above $80 for the first time since late 2014 and bringing its comb since the end last October to 125%. So what a year it's been for commodity prices. <laughs> the rally that characterized the first half of 2021 was underpinned by Salakia, was underpinned by Salakia. Oh, I lost my turn of thought. I lost my spot here. What a year it's been for commodity prices. The rally that characterized the first half of 2021 was underpinned by synchronous drivers. Demand was accelerating across the board and tandem with seizable fiscal, imp uh, 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 fiscal impulses and vaccines led reopening plans and supplies side Salakia. And, and, and Vax's led reopening plans and, su and supply slide was slower to catch up and finance driving drivers included a weaker U.S. dollar further buoyed and complex to the complex. OK. So lucky there's actually some typos in this article. That's really weird. All right. Catch that. So anyway, um. So anyway, the article goes on to speak of um, promising upticks in the uh, in the economy, okay, and insinuating that the return of some sort of normalcy, right, will actually ensue. When in reality, it's quite the opposite, okay. You see, Esau is truly believes that his rulership will go on forever, and even a lot of these jakes out here, you know, despite all the things that are happening on the west coast and our borders, despite the decline in our oil and our energy and the things that's happening across the world, all right, in real time. For some reason, a lot of people still seem to believe or want to think that this place will continue. All right. Um, with then <laughs> that's again, just that's that's a part of that strong delusion that Yahweh Shah has spread upon the people also as well. So it brings me to uh, Psalms 49 and 11. Their inward thought 
is that their houses shall continue forever and that their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. Right. So this is how Esau Edom thinks. You know, people are making preparations, you know, they're building their legacies, you know, people are, you know, getting ready, you know, just looking forward to snapping back to normal, man. You know, saving up their money again for their kids, their kids, 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 grandkids, and so forth and so on. They're making all these plans, okay, thinking that this stuff will just continue, okay? They've destroyed this planet, man, okay? So lock it. So now, <laughs> his eye is searching out other planets, all right, to inhabit him. OK, labeling everything he comes comes across as his. OK, what's the first thing that Esau did when he went to the moon? Hmm? So-called, should I say, went to the moon. He took a damn American flag and planted that right there in, in, in the so-called moon. Right. Saying what? Mine. This is mine. <laughs> no. Daniel 7 makes it clear. Esau's kingdom is the last throne to be cast down before Yahweh Shai sits. OK, so for those of you who are familiar with crude oil. All right, just to kind of go back to that, it's a natural occurring uh, petroleum product, okay, that's composed of hi uh, hydrocarbon deposits and basically other mechanic, uh, organic materials. So it's very, very important, actually, that you pay attention um, to our energy, you know, to our gas, to our spending, um, to our supply chain as a whole, especially in these times that we're in right now, okay, because um, we just believe through the spirit, um, all this stuff is happening for a reason because they're going to ration things out, but they're going to do it in a timely manner um, that makes sense to be able to push their agenda. OK, so this is what we have to. Um, this is what we have to um, be mindful of. All right. So um, anyway, it's just a lot like um, crude oil. Um, so uh, like I was saying, crude oil. So basically it's like fossil fuel. OK, so if any of you guys are familiar with fossil fuel. All right. It's basically um, it's kind of the same thing that produces gasoline or diesel fuel. All right. It's a, a non-renewable source, which means basically it's, 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 uh, it can't be replaced naturally at the rate that we consume it. All right? Therefore, it's a limited resource. Okay, so this is one of the main reasons why um, all of these things are happening. Um, all of these prices are going up. We're paying $80 a barrel you know, for oil and stuff now. You know? So all of these things are going up, um, but it's all due to the seizing that's going on on the West Coast. And actually, that's going on all throughout the world right now. All right. So um, let me see here. Where's our guy here? I see. All right. So yeah. Um, so like I said, um, basically, this siege is pretty much like a domino effect, man. All right. Um, it's causing major issues across the world economy. All right. And all these things will have a major effect on the average American citizen. All right. And we're coming into the winter right now. All right. We're at times where a lot of homes and businesses all right, and health facilities are using a lot of gas, a lot of hot water, a lot of heat, you know, for cooking, and et cetera. All right. So this winter is going to be hit hard, man. I right? see the average person. All right. Uh, oblivious to following the current events are really going to feel um, are really going to feel the pinch, man. All right. And for those who aren't even paying attention, you know, to really what's going on, who just kind of you know, have a spirit of consciousness, even they can see that something's just not right here, man. Okay? Things are falling apart here, man, and this place is not going back to normal, man. There are just a plethora of issues. We literally, as a men and Lord, can't, can't keep up um, with all the stuff that's going on out here, okay? So we have to understand that the Heavenly Father, just like in Daniel 7, he rose up them kingdoms, but he took them down. All right. In his own manner, within his own time in America is no different. Deuteronomy 722. And the Lord, thy power will put out those nations before thee by little and little. Thou mayest not consume them at once, lest the beasts of the field increase upon thee. Right. So this is what's been happening. OK, as you can see, all right, when you look at the news media every day, America is being consumed little by little, is it not? The Lord said, I'll do my pleasure. Did he not? The Lord enjoys judgment, taking down the wicked. All right. Ever since this pandemic all right, has kicked off America and all the kings of the earth. All right. Who are in bed with her. All right. Through her currency and her dip in her uh, 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 democracy. All right. Have been on a downward spiral, losing more and more of their economy, more and more of their businesses and corporations are shutting down. All right. Across the globe, more and more wicked legislation is being passed as well into law. All right. Which leads us to that civil unrest that's coming. All right. So this is it's it's simmering right now, but it's getting ready to overflow, man. OK, Jeremiah 51 and seven. Babylon hath been a golden cup 
Babylon, a.k.a. America, had been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. Drunken with what? Her democracy. Her laws. Okay? Her USD. All right? The USD, the American dollar that all the world has to trade in, the petrodollar. All right? The nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. <laughs> you see? Damn right. All right, all this money, all right, the nations are losing. All right, they're mad as hell. All right, they talk, they can talk about it. We've all heard it, right? They're all talking about dropping the USD. Look, they can't do that, all right? They're rooted into this thing, all right? There ain't no getting out, okay? It's basically like, um, it's like a binary contract, all right, for the nations, okay? They pretty much got finessed like a motherfucker, all right? Just to be, just to put it simple and plain, all right? And that finesse started in 1944 in something called the Britain Wood Agreement, all right, which is basically a monetary management system, all right, that established the rules for commercial and finance, Salakia, financial relationships, okay, among the United States, Canada, Western European countries, Australia, Japan, you know, places like that, you know, etc. Because scripture says, all right, that Esau is the most cunning beast of the field, meaning the most slicked, slickest creature the Lord ever created, all right, deceiving the entire world that they might agree to set up his USD as the global world currency, man. Well, that's the ultimate gangster move right there, man. That is the ultimate gangster move right there, all right? And now today, with all this hyperinflation, okay, due to the overprinting, all right, of this, of this toilet paper that we spend, all right, they're trying to spring back to normal. <laughs> Jeremiah 51 and 9, we would have healed Babylon. But she is not healed. Forsake her and let us go, everyone into her own country. For her judgment reaches unto heaven and is lifted up even unto the skies. Right. So how are they attempting to heal Babylon? Stimulus checks, government bailouts and relief funding, basically printing more money, more debt notes. All right. I'm pumping it into the economy. All right. Which will only thicken that already thick clay. All right. Which is that debt. Habakkuk 2 and 6. Shall not all these take up a parable against him and a taunting proverb against him? Against who? Esau. What's that proverb? Prophesying the destruction of this down uh, and the downfall of this wicked ass kingdom. Letting him know he's going into slavery. All right. Scripture goes on to say and say woe unto him that increases that which is not his. How long? And to him that laden himself with thick clay. Right. You see? So he's robbed the entire planet. How long will he continue stealing, creating false wealth, right, with debt notes, all right, toppling governments, funding their bankers' wars? Our entire supply chain is being intentionally seized on the West Coast by these devils. And now through the spirit, what I believe or what we believe I should say is happening is that all these corporations, these companies, these major manufacturing warehouses are all exhausting, all right, all of their resources, all of their back stock, everything to keep the sense of some type of normalcy. All right, and continual prosperity. But eventually, all these things are going to run out, man. All right? These warehouses with these products in them, all these things are going to run out. All right? And we're already starting to see that. All right? Seeing these product shelves and all. When you look at these products on um, some of these shelves that are disappearing and a lot of these supermarkets, shelves that were once, I want to say, held like five yards of product space are now reduced to like a couple of feet. I'm sure you all have noticed them when you all have walked into some of these stores, right? And that's because they're not housing as much product anymore. OK, it's happening gradually, but it is happening. OK, make no mistake about it. OK, so when that scarcity of food really hits. All right. The plan is to have the National Guard set up to come out. All right. Assume authority and control over all the cargo shipments. All right. And all their containers via through the U.S. government. All right. And they will begin to ration out food and supplies to those who have the juice only. You see, if I was Satan, that's what I would do. Well, scripture says, behold, I send you out as sheep amongst wolves. Therefore, be as, as wise as a serpent, but harmless as a dove. Well, being wise as a serpent, that's what I would do if I was a serpent. That makes sense to me, right? I mean, that's a slick move. OK. All right. And that that's when this juice compliance, once they kick that off, this juice compliance is going to skyrocket, man. All right. So we see all these draconian laws will soon bring on that sense of urgency. All right. Of desperation. All right, because the threat of starvation will bring order and compliance real quick to the average person, man. All right. But violence will not be negated. All right. 
during this process, uproars of the people will escalate tremendously and sedition will begin. Please believe it. Second Edgers 1514 and 16. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and their destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hands, for there shall be sedition amongst men, and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. Right. So basically, they're not going to regard their police, their government officials. All right. And with no law in place, all right, to govern the people anymore, men will have that do as thou will spirit. All right. This will be real life purge here in America. Okay. Why do you think they push all these movies for predictive programming so much, man? All right. They know why. All right. To prepare you for what's coming subconsciously. Okay. Second Edges 15, 19, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their house with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread for great tribulation. You see? So what do you think is causing that lack of that lack of uh, 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 of bread? The siege. All right. We're witnessing right now on the West Coast. All right. This is going to escalate into utter chaos and anarchy. y'all. Please believe it. This is not going to end smooth. Second Edges 622. And suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown. The full houses shall suddenly be found empty. Right. And this is because the supply chain is being broken intentionally right now. All right. Well, all these workers out of work because the wicked decrees that are set up. All right. The people are going to be in serious straits. No foods, no supplies, no medicine. Which brings me to Isaiah 1950. Neither shall there be any work for Egypt, meaning America, which the head or tail branch or rush may do. Right. Work for the head, meaning the rich. The tail meaning the poor, okay? We've been seeing that nonstop in the news, all right? And CNBC News article mentions, all right, a survey being done with the ATA. For those who don't know the ATA, that's the American Trust Group Association. Get familiar with it, all right? You know the men that basically go out here and, <laughs> you know, fill our, our markets with supplies and food and all our grocery stores? Okay, so basically this article reads, an international survey from the American Truckers Association estimates that carriers subject to the mandates would lose about 74% of unjuiced employees or 37% of their total workforce to retirements, resignations, or employees switching to work for smaller companies not covered by the mandates. All right, you see? So this is that great resignation, okay? These mandates are unrighteous decrees have people leaving their, their jobs and droves, okay? All of this is happening right now. This C-19 is shutting down the world. Now the supply chain is shut down, okay? And y'all don't see this thing heating up out here? Y'all don't see this cauldron being mixed and heated up? The fire under this thing, man? All right? It's all out here in the news, okay? But Jake is distracted. Too distracted with Yeezy and Soldier Boy circus shit, Okay? This is why it's very, very important, you know, to to have keep your eyes single, man. As watchmen of the Lord, we are we are ordained to watch, keep watch. Goes on to say in another news article, according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, four million Americans quit their job in July 2021. Resignations peaked in April and have remained abnormally high for the last several months, with a record-breaking 10.9 million open jobs at the end of July. How can employees retain people in the face of this tidal wave or resignations? They can't. All right. One creep increase that comes to mind is idea 2410. For the city of confusion is broken down and every house shut up that no man may come in. You see? So we see that the foreigners all right, are leaving America in droves because there's no more money in here to be made. All right. Mom and pops. All right. And their jobs. All right. And these businesses are fading away. In Washington, they reported roughly 2000 state workers getting fired or resigning. OK. Due to mandates of juicing, man. All right. These are our police, our firefighters, EMTs, hospital staffs, health care workers. All right. And this is just in one state, Jake. So how much more will die or how much more will this be when this thing really kicks off, man? And multiple states across the across the across the uh, across the U.S. All right. So here we are in this man's kingdom. All right. Well, he's hoarded all the riches, all the riches of the entire world. All right. Which he has in his possession, which can fix everything. We really can go back to normal like never before, man. To be honest, sure. We, we really can. But Esau's the wicked. 
He's not going to do that. And the Lord has put the spirit on him to bring this place down. Aren't y'all tired of this shit, man? No real food, no real water. You ain't never breathed no real air. Ain't never tasted nothing real. Ain't never lived. We were born into slavery here. Birth certificate, social security card, ID. All those are binary contracts, man. For all y'all say, I ain't no slave bullshit. You better wake up, Jake. James 5 and 3. Your gold and your silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire, and you have heaped treasures together for the last days. Right. So all of this gold, because again, they took our gold. Esau took our gold, our silver, and gave us toilet paper with his face on it. So all they got all that gold, all that silver, all those real riches that are sitting in the vault somewhere, rusting. And that same rust is going to be a witness against their ass when Yahweh Shah returns. You see? So Esau has more than enough money to make the earth paradise, man. All right? He's robbed the world of real money, man. Like I said, which is that gold, which is that silver. All right? And so this is why this, is why, this, is why this man's got to go, man. All right? Even our own constitution says that real true money is gold and silver. And all things must be traded and such. Matter of fact, let me, let me, let me, let me get that. That's a constitution. It was Article 1. Section 10. Yeah. No, Article 1, Section 10. No state shall coin money, admit bills of credit, make anything but gold and silver a tender and payment of debts. You see? This means that only constitutionally valid forms of money are gold and silver coin. All right? That's called lawful monies. Okay? U.S. pepper money was used, used to be redeemable at one time. Okay? And that's when it was backed by gold and silver, okay? But those days are long, long forgotten. I remember back in the day we had um, silver certificates, okay? Um, and what you could do, you could take those silver certificates. They look just like dollar bills. You can take them to the bank and you can get, you can get like uh, an ounce of silver. You can actually trade it in for actual silver. But that's no more, man, okay? They took all of our silver and gold and gave us unconstitutional forms of money, man, all right? And this goes back to Sirach 10 because of unrighteous dealings and injuries got by deceit. Okay? This shit this devil is doing, man. And this is why his time is up and this kingdom's got to fall, man. This kingdom is switched from one. It's, 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 it's the, the, the riches are switched. The power is switched from one to another. And the one who's going to have it is the one who owns it. And this is Yahweh Shah coming. All right? His kingdom is finished, Esau. Esau's kingdom is done. Yahweh Shah is sitting on the throne now. Isaiah 20 and 10, let favor be shown to the wicked, yet he will not learn righteousness. Right. Like I said, he has the riches of the world, man. He can fix everything that goes wrong on the planet right now, but he won't learn righteousness. Why? Because the Lord didn't create him that way. The scripture says, look upon the creation, the, the works of the Lord. You see, everything is in two and two. Good is set against, good is set against evil. Light is set against dark. All right. So the Lord gave him the entire planet, man, according to Job 9, 24. And look what this man has done, man. All right, he sees the entire world attempting to starve out in submission and starve us out into submission. All right, and what do you think is going to happen when um, these people out here can't get food, man? Their medicines, their medical supplies. All right, shit's going to be so bad where people are going to be rationing their children. Okay, and as crazy as that sound, don't trip. We did it before. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. That's why the Lord is known as the terrible man. He is a terrible, terrible power. In the ancient world, we called him Alessandra, a great demon-like power, man. The king of terrors, man. He made us eat our own children. The Lord is not playing. He's just been quiet, but now he's starting to speak up. He's woke his men up and we out here prophesying. And he's ready to pull a work, y'all. So you have to understand, man. Yes, we ate our own children. Okay, and that will happen again, man. Ezekiel 4. 16 and 17. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, behold, I will break Salakia. Salakia. Yeah, actually. Yeah, I hadn't even got to that one yet. But actually, this is um, Ezekiel 4, 16 and 17. And this is, again, talking about breaking... Uh, uh, um, food famine here in America. Moreover, he said unto me, son of man, behold, I will break the staff of bread in Jerusalem because we were people before we were placed. 
and they shall eat bread by weight and with care, and they shall drink water by measure and with astonishment that they may want bread and water and be astonished one with another and consume away for their iniquities. Right. They will pile up. All right. That whole pile up of cargo shipments out west. All right. was going to kick that off. That scarcity of food. OK. Is going to be consuming. All right. It's going to is going to be consuming uh, Salakia. Sorry, I had to. Exit this message out of here. I should have turned this off while I'm trying to do my lessons. People are actually sending me messages. So it's like you for that. All right. So, so yeah. So anyway, the scarcity of food, all right, is going to have people consuming everything by measure and by weight. I mean, you're going to be eating everything very, very carefully. Okay. And this judgment really is reserved for the wicked two thirds of Jake as well as the rest of the nations. All right, but mainly the two thirds of Jake for not repenting and not returning unto the Lord, that their sins might be blotted out. All right, Isaiah three and one: For behold, the Lord of hosts thus take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff, the whole stay of bread, and the whole stay of water. You see, so this is going to happen, and it's matter of fact, it's happening now. You already see it. It's just the effect hasn't hit yet. Okay, but it's already happening. All right. This is all the Lord's doing. OK, like we said, he's called the king of terrors for a reason and he will be feared. OK, he's going to bring back that old spirit of cannibalism, like we said. OK, because so like, like I said, there was a time, you know, and this was in um, and uh, we were in Samaria and this was the um, the northern kingdom. All right. When um, who was it? Uh, king Shalmaneser, when he came in and uh, the Assyrians. And uh, um, they sieged Jerusalem, okay? You know, they basically surrounded Jerusalem. You know, they cut off all the water, all the food, the supply chain for the most part, and basically waited us out. And it got so bad that we started to eat our own children, okay? And like I said, all this stuff will, um, will happen again. Your friends, your neighbors, okay? Uh, one will be eating another's children here in Babylon, just like in Samaria, like I said, okay? So this is the account when um, Alyssa was in uh, Samaria during the siege of Jerusalem, all right? And again, like we know, Ecclesiastes 1.9, roughly paraphrasing, says that which is then is now, and that which was what shall be, and there's no new thing under the sun. So everything just repeats itself, okay? So we can all see this is beginning to happen over again when you look out west, Second Kings six twenty eight twenty nine, and the king said unto her, What aileth thee? And she answered, This woman said unto me, Give thy, give thy son that we may eat him today, and we will eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son and did eat him. And I said unto her on the next day, Give thy son that we may eat him. And she had hid her son. <laughs> right. So this is why again. Scripture says, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we, meaning the men of the Lord, persuade men. See, when you're all out there, yeah, yeah, no, because you don't understand the terror that's, that's waiting for you, Jake. You think it's a game. This is why we try and persuade you, okay? The Lord, yes, he made us eat our children, all right? That really happened and it will happen again, all right? It will happen again soon, all right? So whenever you want to conquer a kingdom or an empire, what's the first thing you do? You cut off their supply chain, man. Their food, their water to starve them out. And don't we see this is happening right now? Okay, it happened in the siege of Samaria. It's a question. What do you think, or should I say, why do you think, um, why do you think they boiled the children instead of cooking them? Okay? Because when you boil flesh, it doesn't give off a scent. Okay? Flames will give off a scent and others will come. That's why you must boil them. Okay? So basically, the, 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 the Lord put the spirit on Esau to do this all over again, as he did with the Assyrians. Okay? He will do it again. He will seize the daughter of Babylon. And we see that happening right now. I mean, it's not much, you know, a lot of the people here aren't really talking about it too much. Because, like I said, the warehouses are still issuing out things. So there's still some sense of normalcy here. So, you know, there's no, we're not at scarcity yet. You know, but for the men of the Lord, for those of us who have the eyes have to see, that see what's coming, man. This is, it doesn't get more urgent than the time that we're in right now, Jake. The calm before the storm, man. All right? So we have to understand all these things are happening because the Lord is ordaining these things to happen to take down this kingdom. 
Amos 3 and 6, shall trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Right, shall there be evil in the city and the Lord has not done it? You see, the Lord controls everything, but the elect won't be affected by these plagues as the Lord promised. Isaiah 65, 13, therefore thus saith the Lord Par, behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Right. The men of the Lord have one job to do. Keep the laws, teach, prophesy of the judgments, and get the hell out of the way, man. That's it. Okay? Matthew 6 and 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, for what you shall eat, or what you shall drink, nor for your body, for ye shall put on. Is not your life more than meat and body than raiment? Right. But as we know, Jake can be real simple out here, all right? Just the thought of being without uh, um, food or just being without peer will have Jake bug the fuck out, man. Most people can't go a few hours without eating, all right? So how much more for weeks, man? This is why having that faith and Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah will bring that comfort, that security and abundance, man. Second Edris 2.27, be be not weary for when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh what's that jacob's trouble all of these things that are beginning to come others shall weep and be sorrowful but thou shall be merry and have what abundance you see we're not carnal like that everyone says they believe and they have faith well that's just about to be tested man we're going to see when that baby in there crying because she ain't got no milk we're going to see how far your how deep your faith is now, and where it's going to lie or if you're going to break, you see, we're going to have food. We're going to have drink as the men of the Lord. All right. Just as the, uh, let's lock you up. Oh, sorry. So just as um, the heavenly father fed us angel food, which was that manna in the wilderness with Moses. All right. And also when he sent ravens to bring Elijah food. OK, so whenever whatever's written in this book must come to pass. OK, so all we have to do is be rooted and stern in faith. OK, because we're going to see a lot of really fucked up shit out here, man. Excuse my French, but we are. So staying rooted in this faith is what's going to it's going to it's going to be the, the difference between us, between those who see that salvation and souls who see their demise. OK, this is why it's very, very strong to stay rooted in this thing, man. OK, not swayed, man. S standing stiffly for Yahweh Hashem Yahusha. Matthew 6, 26. Behold the fowls of the air, for they not. For they sow not, right? They don't work, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Right. When was the last time you seen a bird out there punching into a clock? <laughs> you know, any of these animals out here going to work, they don't. Everything they eat from the ground, from the water, from the air, the heavenly Father provides for them. Okay? So how much more for us? All right. This is why this faith is so important. All right. We don't need to worry about how we're going to eat or drink. All right. This is where that real faith, like I said, lies. OK, that spirit you'll have to have to endure what's coming can only be given by Yahweh Bashim Yahweh No amount of guns, money, supply or prepping will help. OK, as scripture says, this will be a day like never before since there was a nation nor ever will be again. OK, understand this is the final showdown, man. OK, the title fight. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, his arms, or Salaki, his army and leagues, I should I say, of angels against Esau and his militaries of the world, man. All right, remember, I mentioned earlier, we're going to go back about the four beasts in, in Daniel 7. Remember the leopard, I said we'll circle back to it, okay? Now, leopard was Esau's first kingdom, which was Greece, okay? The Grecian Empire. What kingdom took Greece down to rule after them? You remember? When you go on Daniel 7 chapter, it was Rome. All right. That diverse beast and force in 146 B.C. All right. So in the case of the beast being kingdoms. All right. One end. Salakia or is or is destroying by the file. One end is being destroyed by its successor or kingdom. All right. To rule after. All right. So to know who would defeat or destroy the daughter of Babylon, the hammer of the earth, America. All you have to do is go to Revelations 3, 2. Salakia, Revelations 13, 2. And the beach which I saw was like unto a leopard, Esau's first kingdom, and his feet were as the feet 
of a bear. Now, who's the bear today? It's lucky. Let me just finish out. And his mouth was the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him the power and the seat and great authority. So keep in mind, all right, this is a dark saying, all right, a parable, all right, and it's a future prophecy. All right, who had the leopard kingdom? That was Esau, Esau Edom, all right, which was his first kingdom, which in this verse is likened to America, Babylon, okay? Now, who had the bear kingdom? That was the Medo-Persian Empire, right? You follow? All right, who are the Medo-Persians today? That would be Russia and Iran, all right? Since the Russo-Persian War that ended in 1813, you can Google this, all right? They've had an agreement, all right, called the, uh, what was it, the Treaty of, of Gulistan, I believe it was. Okay, see, Russia was never part of NATO or the EU, okay? And America has admitted, okay, that um, they have no defense for Russia's Satan-1 and Satan-2 hypersonic missile, okay? Meaning you can't hear it coming. You can't hear it approaching, okay? And it cannot be tracked nor stopped, and it can reach American soil in 45 minutes, okay? So Revelation 13, 2 lets you know America will be destroyed by Russia and its allies, okay? All right, so that's what we have to understand. Russia has been set up to be a guard, okay, against America, the bully, and all of her allies, okay? Hence the reason why the Heavenly Father never allowed it to be with NATO or EU, okay? And soon the Lord is going to turn Russia back to that old Soviet Union warlike spirit, all right, to bring destruction onto this place, man. All right, this is a prophecy concerning Gog and Magog, which today is Russia. Ezekiel 38, 4, 6, and 7. And I will turn thee back and put hooks in thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth and all in thine army, horses and horsemen, and all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords, Gomer and all of his bands, and the house of Tugrama and the north quarters and all his bands, and many people with thee. Be thou prepared, and prepare for thyself thou, and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. You see? So this is talking about the Lord bringing Russia and all their allies together to guard Iran and our allies to prepare for that battle against Babylon, World War Three. Okay, in the island of Jehoshaphat. Okay. Yahweh Shapat. Okay. So we have to understand. Notice the Lord is saying the spirit of the Medes. Okay. Notice the spirit of the Medes. That's Russia. Okay. And the Lord's device against Babylon. So we know. All right. It's, it's the, uh, 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 um, so we know the Medes took down Babylon in 539 B.C. Okay, and when you go into Daniel, the seventh chapter, and you actually go into those dates, that's the actual time when Babylon actually went down. Okay, so today, modern day, again, the spirit of the Medes is Russia. Okay, it's taking down the spirit of Babylon, America. Again, Ecclesiastes 1 and 9, you see? So what's that device for virgin daughter of Babylon, a.k.a. America? It's those ICBM nuclear missiles. Isaiah 54, 16, Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. So what's a smith? You see? A, a smith is a weapons maker. In ancient days, they worked with iron and metals to refine them over hot flames to create... Quran to create um, Salakia. Um, a weapon maker in ancient days worked with iron and metals to redefine over hot flames to create weapons of war. Uh, swords, spears, armors, javelins. Fast forward today, modern day, smiths are scientists, engineers who create weapons of mass destruction. Nuclear missiles, all right, his destroying instrument, 5G pulse weaponry. Um, chemical weapons, etc. Okay, before these plagues hit America, there will be all out anarchy in the streets. Okay, America is called the virgin daughter of Babylon because she has never been infiltrated with troops. All right, the land has never been invaded, but all of that is about to change. Okay, as all of our law enforcement declines, as we can see, all right, and this great resignation continues, the government will bring in those UN troops, man, to govern, and they will be like mad men sparing none, as scripture says, all right? They will be gunning down jakes in the street, pillaging and ravaging women, slaughtering men, children, like there is no tomorrow. You understand? 
Jeremiah 51 and 14. The Lord of hosts has sworn by himself, saying, Surely I will fill thee with men as with caterpillars, and they shall lift up and shout against thee. You see, those men are the UN troops coming into Babylon, man. As we said, a lot of these women out here are going to be through. Okay? There'll be no protection, all right, from what's coming. All right? All this will happen while World War Three is kicking off. Isaiah 13, 17, and 22. Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them, which shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Right, so people will be trying to bribe, all right, will be trying to give, you know, things, all right, but they will have no delight in that, okay? They're not going to be, they're, 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 and the reason why, the main reason why they're not going to, they're not going to, they'll have no delight in it, that scripture says, because they're going to be filled with the anger of the Lord in that day, okay? And they're going to want nothing but blood, okay? And they're going to murder wonderfully, you understand? All right, a lot of these UN troops, all right, at one time, we have to understand we're enemies of America, okay? Until we went over there and toppled their governments, okay, destroyed their land, ravaged their woman, all right, pillaged their leaders, took over all of their resources and everything. So now that those men are now in, those, in that country and our allies to America, when they bring their ass here, what do you think they're going to do when they get in this land, man, with no law enforcement? What do you think they're going to do? You know exactly what they're going to do. All right. They're going to lose their damn mind on the citizens in this land here. Scripture continues to say their bowls also shall dash the young men to pieces and they shall have no pity on the fruit of thy womb, meaning the children. Their eyes shall not spare children and Babylon, the glory of kingdoms and the beauty of the Chaldeans. Excellently, the Chaldeans today are the elite bankers, the modern day elite one percenters, I should say, okay, shall be as when Gog overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Right. So we went through this. All right. It shall never be inhabited. Neither shall it be dwelt there from generation to generation. All right. So, you know, this is talking about America. Okay. Because today, ancient Babylon today is what? Iraq. It's not destroyed. Okay. It was never destroyed. It's still inhabited. As a matter of fact, today, it's a tourist attraction. Okay. So what Babylon is this talking about? Scripture goes on to say, neither shall the Arabian pinch tit there, neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. Right. Meaning there will be no Arabs coming here to America anymore to start their businesses. OK, neither will there be anyone ever living here or working here or having jobs here again. Never, because this will be a desert wasteland inhabited with desert creatures, man. This is going to be the biggest desert on the planet. OK. Scripture continues, both wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, you see, and their houses shall be full of dull creatures, and owls shall dwell there, and satire shall dance there, and the wild beasts of the island shall cry their desolate houses, and the dragons of their pleasant places, palaces, and their time is near to come, and her days shall not be prolonged. You see, the clock is ticking, Babylon, which leads me back to the feature verse. Joel 14 and 5, seeing his days, Esau's days are determined, and the number of Esau's months are with Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Shah has appointed Esau's bounds that he cannot pass. You see? So this is why knowing this truth sets us free. It's already been written, man. This man's going to be destroyed, and we're going to have our kingdom, and we're going to be in glory, man. And we're going to have everything back and more than we can ever imagine, man. And we'll never have to deal with this man again. You know why? Because after a thousand years of him serving off his servitude, all right, as scripture says, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into that captivity, all right, for a thousand years, because the scripture says, served a cup unto her but double. So he has to pay a thousand years of servitude and slavery. And then they're destroyed. And you'll never see him again. All right, so plenty of these lessons we kind of expounded and went into that, the whole Esau being wiped off. You know, Obadiah talks about that. You know, matter of fact, the book of Obadiah is strictly Esau's destruction. That's why it's just one chapter. It's very, it's a, it's, it's, it's a short prophecy, but it's extremely, extremely powerful. Okay, so I advise you to read it. All right, so anyway, um, as we can see, all right, he's in his last hour of rulership, all right, in which he cannot go a minute over, all right, his time is up and his kingdom is finished. All right. He is no longer in his bed in the glory days. OK, his time is now running out and they are scrambling. 
Okay. So anyway, um, I pray that this lesson was edifying, and I want to say, call Hello Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakodash, and Baba Ball. On to the next. Shalom.